Hello everyone, Mike Grempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel Bytes blog post. Today we're going to take a look at the aggregate function, how it's used, and at the end of the video we're going to look at a somewhat complicated use case that I received and how we use the aggregate function to solve it. So let's take a look at this in Excel. So the aggregate function returns an aggregate in a list or database. Now there's two different forms of the aggregate function. There's the reference form, which has the function number, options, and then reference 1, 2, 3, etc. And there's the array form, which has the function number, options, and then your array. And in the case of large or small, you would have the K number for those. And again, that's optional. Now here's the list of the different function numbers and you can see there's 19 different function numbers and many of them are just common Excel functions, average, count, max, min, sum, large, small, etc. But the key with the aggregate function is the options and there are eight different options from zero to seven and you can see they have options such as ignore nested subtotals or ignore hidden rows or ignore error values etc so that is really the key to the aggregate function now here's two simple examples of how the aggregate function works here I have a list of a few different numbers and in that list I have two different errors a divide by zero error and a name error now below, if I just use the standard sum function, you can see I get a divide by zero error. But by using the aggregate function with the function number nine for sum and the option number six for ignore error values, it gives me an answer of 11. So what that did was it added up the cells that did not have errors in it. Same with the max function. If I just tried to get the max of that list, again, I would get a divide by zero error. But in the case of using four for max and six for ignore error values, it gives me the max of four, which is the maximum number of the cells that do not have an error. So using the aggregate function allows you to do different things more than just the basic min, max, sum, average, count, etc functions would normally allow you to do. So with all that being said, let's look at an interesting use case using the aggregate function for the solution. So here's our scenario. I have three different projects and various people from the project team that are working on these projects. And as you can see based on the highlighting, Tim, Jan, and Fred are all working on project one, Barry and Sue on two, and Amy and Jack on three and they each started in different months and then ended their work in different months. So we put an X where the start and end months were. Tim on project one started in January, ended in June. Jan started on project one in March, ended in May, etc. So in this area, what I did was just manually enter what the result that I'm looking for, and that is when is the earliest any of the team members started on a project and when is the latest any of them ended on the project so if we look at project one for example tim started in january jan started in march and fred started in january so the earliest was january and the latest between june may and with fred he just started and ended in the same month of january so the latest would be june so i would want january and june project two barry started in february ended in may sue started and ended in april so i'd want february and may and project three i'd want february because that's when jack started and june that's when amy ended so here's the formula we're going to use. I'll type equals index, and my array for the index function is going to be the months. I'll hit F4 to lock that, comma. My row number is going to be using the aggregate function. And with the aggregate function, the function number I'm going to use is going to be 15, because I want the smallest first, and then the option number is going to be six 
because I want to ignore errors. The array is going to be using the column function and my column is going to be from A1 to H1. I'm going to lock that. I'm going to divide that by parentheses. I'm going to say from A2 to A8, locking that equals A16, which is the project number. Now I'm going to use the F4 function three times to lock the A, but I'm not going to lock the row number. I'll close that parentheses and I'm going to divide that by whether C2 to H8, which is the data range, and again I'll lock that, equals X. Close that parentheses, comma, and my K number for the small function is going to be 1. I want the smallest column number. Close that parentheses and then close the index parentheses, hit enter, and you can see I got January. If I copy that down, I got January, February, and February. I'm just going to say fill without formatting. And then, since the only difference between the start and end is instead of wanting the small or the smallest number, I want the largest. So if I copy that over and then change the function from 15 instead to 14, 14 is the large function. So I'll change that to 14, control enter, and I get June, copy that down, again fill without formatting, and I get June, May, and June just like I wanted. Now let's walk through this formula and see how it works. First I'm just going to expand my formula bar a bit so we'll be able to see the results as we walk through this formula. So the first thing that the aggregate function looks at is the column number. So if I take the column number and hit F9, you'll see it just gives me column 1 through 8. Now I want to divide that by the fact does A2 through A8, which is the list of projects, equals A16, which is project 1. So if I select that and hit F9, You'll see I get true, false, true, false, false, true, then false again. Now, if I take those two items and divide the column numbers 1 through 8 by whether the list of projects equals project 1, I'll hit F9 and you'll see where it's true, I get the list of column numbers. Then I get divide by zero, divide by zero, and then where project one is true again, again I get those list of column numbers, and then lastly in the third spot down here I get that list of column numbers. Now the last thing we're going to do is see if C2 to H8 equals X. I'll take that range, hit F9, and again Every place there's an X, it'll give me a true. Every place there is not an X, it gives me a false. So if I take that first result of that division and again divide by that list of trues and falses, I'll highlight that range, hit F9, so you'll see I get a 1 for column 1 of January through June, where the project equals project 1 and the cell in the data range equals X. And then I get a 6, and that is where in row 2 with project 1, I have another X. If I go through again, the next one that pops up will be a 3, because that's January, February, March for project 1 for Jan. Then I get a 5, which is in May. And lastly, I'll get another 1 right here where Fred was working on project 1. So now with the aggregate function, I want to see... 15, which is the small function, 6, which is ignore errors, because you notice every time I had a false and I did a division, I got a divide by zero error. So I want to ignore all those and find the small function, ignoring errors, and then my k number of the small function is a number 1. So again, if I click on index, select my row number, hit F9, 
the result is a 1. So my index C1 to H1 with a 1, that's going to give me the answer of January. If I had used multiply by instead of divide by, what would have happened is I would have got a lot of zeros when you multiply the false times a number you get zero because false equals zero and therefore the small function would have returned zero instead of a one and it would have given me an incorrect answer so that's why we use divide by so I would get a divide by zero error every time I divided by a false now in the large function I could go either way because if I divide by a false, it's going to give me a divide by zero error. If I multiply times a false, I'm just going to get a zero. But that's all irrelevant if I'm looking for the largest value in the group. But just to be consistent between my two different formulas, I left it as divide. So that's the importance of using the aggregate function here. It allows me to find the smallest number when I'm looking for when each of these projects were started, but I can ignore the error values in order to allow me to get to that smallest number and not have that smallest number be a zero. So that's how this function works in this use case in Excel. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so at my website, excel-bytes.com, or at any of the social networks noted below. Thanks a lot, have a great day, and happy excelling!